What do you need to know to pass the second subtest of the CSET multiple subjects exam? That's exactly what we're gonna look at in this video. My name's Scott Roselle, founder of 240 Tutoring, and I made this video so you know exactly what scientific concepts will be on the second subtest of the CSET multiple subjects exam. So how do I know what's on the test? Well, as a founder of 240 Tutoring, I have studied this test to make sure 240 Tutoring offers the best study guide available. And I've looked at this test and I've studied it left and right, up and down, backwards, forwards, and I found some very key concepts, some secrets you might say, about the test, and I wanna share the secrets I unlocked about the test with you on this video. So keep watching, and go ahead, like the video, subscribe to it, even leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing so we can keep creating videos just like this for future teachers like you. Now the science questions on the second subtest of the CSET multiple subjects test can really be divided into three areas. Earth and space science, life science, and physical science. Earth and space science is really gonna look at the solar system and the universe, the atmosphere of the Earth, and the Earth's structure and composition. Life science looks at exactly that, living and sometimes non-living organisms on the Earth, life on Earth, reproduction, and the theory of evolution. Physical science focuses on the structures and properties of matter, as well as energy and motion. So let's look at each of those categories specifically and nail down concepts you will likely see on the test. To really rock the earth and science section, you've got to know about basic rock formations. And I'm not talking about rock and roll here. I'm talking about real rock. So you're gonna wanna know the difference between sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic rock and kind of the characteristics of each one. You're also going to need to know about the characteristics of different minerals, specifically quartz, calcite, hornblende, and other common ore materials. And also, more abstractly, you should really understand the impact of the Earth's processes on the Earth's structure. So what does that mean? You need to know how things like erosion, especially from water, can impact rock formations and how different type of weathering can impact environments. And finally, you've got to know about the water cycle and the fundamental impact it has upon the Earth. What about space? I didn't mention anything about space science. While there's a lot of concepts that can deal with space, there is one concept that is almost guaranteed to be on the test, the concept of the lunar cycle. And the lunar cycle really is how the moon revolves around the Earth and the placement of the Earth, the moon, and the sun at any different time. The lunar cycle is incredibly important for a number of reasons to the Earth, and you have to know about the cycle if you're gonna get questions right on the Earth and space science test. The lunar cycle is very fundamental to the processes on the Earth, and it's almost guaranteed to come up on the test. Now, the big concept to know for Earth and space science is the theory of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is a theory that under the Earth's crust, there's all sorts of very large, very loosely adjoined plates that shift and float on the Earth's surface. It's these shifts that are the primary cause of mountains, earthquakes, and volcanoes across the Earth. Now let's look at some life science concepts. Life science is really gonna focus on life on the Earth, hence life science. And fundamentally, life science involves understanding that life on Earth is made up of cells and how those cells work. So you're gonna need to know how cells work, what they're made up of, and how they reproduce. Now, most all living organisms need three things to survive, water, food, and shelter. In understanding the relationship between organisms and how they fight for, or sometimes work together to secure these three basic necessities is foundational, and it's called an ecosystem. Understanding how ecosystems work and really how fragile they can be is imperative to understanding life science. Now, on the multiple subjects test, you're gonna to wanna to be specific with a few life cycles. This is where all my studying about the test really kicks in. You're gonna to wanna to know about the life cycle of a butterfly, a frog, and a mouse, as those are common examples you'll find on the science questions on the multiple subjects test. You also need to know how different animals reproduce, both sexual and asexual reproduction. And this really ties into the theory of natural selection, which undergirds the theory of evolution. Knowing how reproduction impacts natural selection, how natural selection impacts evolution, is going to be key to getting those life science questions correct. Now your big concept to know for life science is the food chain. Specifically, who's on the bottom, who's on the top, and how energy is transferred from one level of the food chain to the next. The physical science questions are really gonna look at the properties of matter, and how energy and motion work in our universe. And when I say physical properties of matter, I mean things like, is it a solid, a liquid, a gas? What's its mass? What's its density? What's its conductivity? And along with knowing the physical properties of matter, you need to know the physical changes of matter. Like when water transfers from going to a freezing block of ice to a gas, 
And just as there's physical changes of matter, there's chemical changes of matter, like when water is added to coffee grounds to make coffee. That's a chemical change. Additionally, for physical science, you need to know the structure of an atom and how different atomic structures create different elements. And that's how the periodic table is organized. You see, the periodic table is arranged by increasing number of protons in an atomic nucleus. I bet you didn't know that. So how an atom is arranged and how many protons and electrons are in it really defines what element it is. You're also gonna see questions about pH balance and you're gonna need to know the pH level of various household items like soda, water, and detergent. And since physical science deals with physics, you need to know the basic fundamentals of objects in motion, like the different ways to describe an object's motion, such as position, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, and you're also gonna to need to know the different types of energy. And when I say different kinds of energy, not only am I talking about things like potential and kinetic, I'm also talking about things like nuclear, electrical, solar, chemical. And you need to know really the difference between heat and temperature and how heat is transferred, like ways of conduction, convection, and radiation. Now the big concept to know are waves, specifically wavelengths. And you need to know how things like amplitude and frequency impact characteristics. And when you change amplitude or frequency, it can drastically change how that wavelength is perceived or manifested in the physical environment. Now, if you have any questions about the test, leave a comment below. If you have any thoughts about the video, leave a comment below. Let us know how we're doing, what you liked, what you didn't like. It helps us keep creating videos for teachers just like you so they can pass their test and get in, into the classroom.